welcome everyone to our Q&A with Click webinar series. We're so excited to have all of you with us today. This is our October session and it's on the big wide world of Click Cloud. So it's a really big topic. Uh, we have some great experts here to answer your questions and we'll do our best to answer all of them. Um, this webinar series you're joining today is a live question and answer session. So yes, we're all here in real time. Um, you may have seen us refer to it as our live open door office hours with our expert panelists. So we'll use all of this time to allow you to ask a question on today's topic and then get to know the clickies a bit more. That's what we like to call ourselves. Um, so for those of you who are new to this series, I'm Katie Davis. I will be your moderator. I've been sick all last week, so sorry if I sound extra nasally and extra deep, but hopefully you can make it out. <laughs> if not, feel free to just raise your hand, ask the question. Um, I'm a senior community program manager, bringing support related events like these for our users and working on various digital channels out on Click Community. If you're not on Click Community, you should definitely be on Click Community. That's where all of we live, where we all live. Um, Vinay Bot, who's one of our uh, panelists today, he's always answering those forum questions. So if you have questions, you can also type them in any Click Community forums and he'll be the man on the job answering those questions. Um, you might have seen me posting on our support updates blog, which is out on Click Community. That's another great place to get support updates, um, product news, just for your information, I'm located in Philadelphia, which is along the East Coast of the United States. We're having a great fall here because our sports teams are doing amazing, both the Philadelphia Eagles and our Philly baseball team. So I'm really proud to be in this town this season. Uh, now, before I introduce our esteemed panelists, which are from all other parts of the world, uh, I'll go over our session parameters Everyone is currently on mute, so you only hear me speaking. I won't hear you speaking. So we ask that you type your questions in the Q&A panel. So you'll see a little button below that says Q&A. And let me show it to you on my screen. Hold on. Right there, it says Q&A. So type those questions there so we can answer them live. We're not going to type back to you because we're going to speak to them. So keep an ear out for your question. Um, I want to let everyone know that a survey link will pop up when the session is ended. There's also a QR code linked in this presentation. Um, please take our survey. It takes 10 seconds. It tells us what we're doing good, what you guys want to see, and what you want us to improve on. We love getting topic suggestions. It makes my job a lot easier. So you can either put those in your survey response or email those ideas to digital at click.com. You can also give us those topic ideas when you register. So go ahead and check out our registration page for the next event. Again, we do these monthly. So our next session is on the Click Management Console, which is also linked in this presentation. So back to why we are all here today, and that is all things Click loud. We ask that you keep your questions relative to that topic, which does cover a lot. Um, and while we do have click experts on the line, we'll not be able to answer any of your questions regarding a specific open case. We have an impressive list of panelists today. Thank you all for letting us steal some of your time. I'll list them all off and then I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. So we have with us today, Thomas Hopp, a Director of Product Management. We have Vinay Bott, our SAS Subject Matter Expert Support Engineer. And then we have Rashmi Ramakrishna, a Senior Customer Experience Analyst. Um, so we're trying to get all different parts of our organization involved here to help you today. So let's go through introductions. Thomas, you wanna say something about yourself? Yep. Thank you, Katie. Um, yeah. You know what? 
Tom, if that was my fault, I think I muted you. Can you unmute it? Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So I, I just got the said, no, 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 no worries. I because I felt like I did unmute it myself, but then you know I was maybe double muted somewhere. In, <laughs> no after worries. all the sessions I've done, you think I would figure it out by now? <laughs> Actually, good, good that we that, good that we figured that like after five seconds, not after five minutes, right? right. So, yeah, so, <laughs> um, no, but yeah. You know, well, thank you, Katie, and hi everyone. Um, yeah. So I'm based there. Uh, well, I'm working here out of the year. Uh, well. Not at the German office today, but I'm, I'm based in Germany. Uh, I'm with Click actually for uh, something about like 16 years. So I've been here like for some time, um, and I'm in the product management team since seven years now. And before that, I was in the field like pre post sets, you know, positions that I was like working with before. And uh, yeah, happy to be here and trying to answer as many questions as uh, we can today. So. Over to you, Vinay, I think, right there. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Thomas. So, my name is Vinay, and I've been here with Click for uh, more than three years now. I started with customer support, and I've moved to the so, you know SaaS support in the last couple of years. And uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, we support our SaaS customers with any of the technical queries we receive, either it be in you know, a cases or in you know, a community-wise. So, yeah, uh, you know. We'll try to help out as you know as much as possible to address the queries. So, looking forward to your questions. Last but not least, Rashi, you want to share? Yes. Hi all. Uh, I'm Rashmi. I'm uh, hearing click over the past three years. I'm into customer support. So, uh, I'm uh, serving as a senior customer experience and analyst and uh, helping customers with all the account license related queries. Um, hope uh, to have a very interactive sessions today. Great, thank you. All right, I'm going to dive into some of the questions we have. I already see one question was submitted by the audience, so keep on putting your questions in the Q and A. Um, I'm going to start with some general questions. Um, because before we start this, I always look across community to see what are unanswered questions that we can kind of tackle right off the bat, and then we, we dive into your technical questions that you may be asking. So the first question, I think it's really important to anyone who's starting off with Click Cloud, um, and I'm probably gonna ask Rashmi to, to answer this one. It says, how do I activate my Click Cloud? So they've purchased, they've signed up, how do they start? <laughs> Uh, so basically, if you are referring to a ClickSense business trial, so once you sign up the uh, form, so you will be receiving the onboarding email. Uh, so uh, the instruction will be provided in the uh, onboarding email itself. When you tap on the link, like it navigates you to the Click Cloud and instructs you uh, to the to create the tenant. So that is when you start up a click a cloud account. And if it comes to purchase subscription also, uh, you will receive the onboarding email uh, to get started with the click account. So uh, you have to follow the instructions mentioned in the onboarding email and uh, that helps you to like navigate it to the click cloud, creating the tenant based on your specific uh, region. And we do also have the option to create it from my click portal directly if you are like unable to find the emails in your folder. So you can just log into my click portal and uh, choose your subscription to which you are looking to uh, create that tenant. That's great. So your golden ticket is that email, or you can yes. go to my click portal if you can't find it. I know a lot of emails get buried in my inbox. Um, yeah, and then I'll right. add if you guys run into any problems. We have a live chat out on Click Community that says contact support where Rashmi's team of customer experience analysts can help you get started and get your login credentials going. So that's another great resource as well. Um, okay, I'm going to jump into how do we know what's compatible with Click Cloud? So like I introduced before, we have quite a large product suite, feature suite, um, in Click Cloud, and the people are asking. I think I saw that on Community is N printing on Click Cloud, which I don't believe it is, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, people are asking about AutoML and other features. 
Um, so feel free panelists to jump in when if you want to answer this. I'm going to go ahead and pull up before the session. I kind of bookmarked some key pages, which are, I'll share with everyone. Um, but we have our Click Cloud page on click.com. So if you go into our click.com, it's right on the top there and it covers everything in the Click Cloud world. Um, there's even an option to do some hybrid deployments, which maybe Thomas can speak to in a little bit. Um, so the, the world of possibilities all, is all out there and you can and you can click into some of the key features that we have like data transformation, application automation um, that are all key parts of this Click Cloud. So I encourage you to check this out and I'll, I'll share the link. And I also encourage you to go to our help.click.com. This is where we have a lot of great uh, product documentation. And not only do we have a what is Click Cloud overview, which I'm sure most of you here who are joining are already aware of, have been using Click Cloud. We have a what's new in Click Cloud page. And it goes through kind of all the key new releases um, like today we're releasing our Click Cloud data integration features. Um, and recently we've done data gateway updates. You can scroll through these and see all of the recent changes in Click Cloud if you wanna see what's new, what's coming, um, this is the place to go. So I'll pause and let anyone else jump in on that one if you guys want to. Yeah, I can. I mean, I, so I can take a first step here, and then you know, I mean, I, well, the other guys obviously can can add. But so, so maybe first of all, you know, in terms of what's compatible, I think you know when I'm, uh, you know, yeah. So what's compatible? I think the most important piece here is you know that for instance, an app that you have developed in you know your ClickSense client managed slash you know the Windows version, you know, there's no need to migrate the app or doing something like that. You know, the app just works the same way. So we are not making any difference here. You know, from, from that perspective, that's the number one thing, right? You know, from a cap capability perspective, you know, that is really, uh, you know, where you can just simply take an app and, you know, Katie just mentioned the hybrid mode. So you can either export the app and, you know, where you say, hey, I want to export the app from my cloud managed environment. And then I import the app over into my SaaS environment, which makes the app work in the same way. Uh, the second step could be that you might want to distribute. So in case you want to connect the client managed environment with your SaaS environment, then you can distribute apps, meaning you can keep the reload, you know, you can have that like saying on your Windows environment, you reload the apps and then whenever the app has been updated, you send an updated version over to your SaaS tenant. So that's more of a push, right? So that's another way, which again, you know, it's taking the QBF file and distributes the app over to your SaaS tenant. So that from a capabilities or compatibilities perspective just works the same way, right? So that's purely on the app level, you know, talking about, um, you know, value added services, you know, <clears throat> other features, other capabilities like end printing, like AutoML, you know, on the, I mean, end printing is a pretty specific example because we as Click, you know, we said we are not, you know, we are not taking end printing and making, you know, an end printing version, you know, like a SAS version of it. That's not something that we plan. Um, there's a pretty significant kind of, you know, plan and roadmap, uh, well, investment happening as we speak, you know, on bringing more and more capabilities for reporting capabilities into the cloud. So that is something, you know, I would almost suggest that we might have a specific session on that one because there's a big kind of investment happening on that one. Um, uh, so, that is one thing. I mean, AutoML is available in the clouds. I mean, if we talk about, you know, I mean, we can obviously compare things. The same goes for, you know, things like the inside advisor, you know, there's, you know, uh, I'm not saying everything is exactly the same, but, you know, generally speaking, our intent is to either offer the same level or adding more capabilities, you know, to what you can do from, you know, what you can do today. So that is, uh, uh, I stop here for a second to see if anyone else wants to add something and, uh, Thank you guys. That was great um, color commentary, Thomas. I appreciated that. Uh, now I'm going to go into some of the questions. We have a lot coming in the Q&A. Thank you guys. Keep on asking your questions below. I'm going to go in order, even though it might hop around a little bit. Um, Rampani has asked, I need to create a SAP data connection that will be used in different apps. 
Do you recommend that I create a dedicated space to do that? What do you guys think? I mean, I can, well, so I, I, again, I, I can take that one too. Um, so this is, uh, so different ways of doing this, but in that particular case, I would recommend you, you know, doing a dedicated space for that because that gives you, uh, you know, as you say, the ability to use the same data connection, um, you know, in multiple apps and those apps can be as well in multiple spaces, you know, so there is uh, the ability that you can, you uh, um, uh, I actually haven't prepared that one on my test, but while I'm talking, I can maybe even bring this one up here in a second, so then I can show you how this uh, how this looks like, you know, in action. Because you can have in this lib statement, you can uh, so the lib statement is actually you know in your script a way how you can um, how you can connect yourself over a data connection into different spaces, right? So that is where uh, where you can easily do it this way. Um, so Again, to answer the question in the shortest possible way, yes, you know, the best possible way would be to have the data connection sitting in a space, and then you can have multiple apps in, in multiple other spaces connecting, you know, to SAP via this data connection. And we, as Click, we are as well planning to add more finer grained security control here that you can have um, permissions then defined on uh, on data connections itself. You know, that is something that we are that we are planning to do as well, so just to add that as well as one, um, you know, possible thing that will be added right now. You can you can limit permissions on the space level where you can say, hey, I want to, you know, give someone can consume data, and that is happening, you know, on the on the space level. So I can uh, just, you know, if we have another two minutes on that question, then I can I can share my screen. Uh, hang on, I'm doing it right now. So you guys should see now the uh, the tenant, you know. Um, so what I'm doing first is maybe just to show you what I just talked about in terms of permissions, you know. Um, so we have, so I'm in, so right now, you know, this is, I'm in a shared space right now. So the blue icon, you know, I mean, we did this for one of our customers, you know, hard to, so to, to hide everything, you know, kind of having, so this is one of the customers, you know, that, that uh, I've been talking to recently. So that's why the demo has been adjusted a bit, you know, naming wise, but it doesn't really, so permissions wise, if I'm in this shared space, uh, I can go to manage my space, I can go to members. Um, and when I select any of these kind of, you know, people here, or can, you know, add a new one, Right here in this list, you have this can consume data. So I can zoom in. So this one here, if you only give, so disable, so disable this one and give people only can consume data, this only allows people to load data via a data connection into another app. You know, there, there's no need for any other permission. Just give them that can consume data <laughs> and that allows you to connect, you know, to your SAP connection in that, you know, example, right? And that's how you can do that. Um, and from where they connect, it doesn't matter. That is, uh, that is uh, yeah, possible. The other thing I wanted to show quickly is if I go uh, back to my app list, so I can just quickly go into this, you know, there's a super simple demo app here, but this one shows you the, the possibilities of the, uh, how you connect to spaces. So if I go to my script editor here, and then I can zoom into this section. So um, in that particular case, I'm storing, but you know the same works obviously for the load. But you know here you can see the difference. I'm I'm storing a QVD right into the same space where I'm running this app right now, which is why there's only you know the colon here, you know. So and then here in this case, I'm storing into a space the same file, but I'm calling out the space explicitly here, right? You know that's the difference, and you can use the same mechanism for loading. So that allows you to say, hey, whenever the app needs to connect to a different data source, you know, just make sure that you have the uh, the space name in front and then the rest kind of the same. This is data files here, but this again, the lib statement works the same way for um, a data connection, which again is the SAP example. So, yep. So that was uh, a slightly longer way to answer this question, but I hope that one uh, covered that. There's lots of ways to do our, our data connection, so that's great. All right, and then we have another question from Jeff saying, with the SAO account, that service account owner, does this have any special privileges versus the tenant admin 
And how do we reassign in the event that the FA user transfers? So I'm guessing they would transfer out of the org. Um, who wants to take that one? I feel like they're all pretty apt to, to answer that question. I can answer okay. it all. Okay. Go ahead, Rashmi, you start. And then Vinay, feel free to add in and jump in. Yeah. <clears throat> So SAO is a person who like it means uh, basically it means a sole to contact person to whom the license is linked to uh, to um, provide like how, what is the special privileges they have. Uh, SAO contact person will have the access rights to manage the subscription in my click portal. Uh, to give you an example, uh, you can just add the users to the subscription, um, reduce the seats. Uh, cancel the subscription, renew the subscription. So basically uh, managing the subscription in my click portal is assigned to the SAO account or the SAO contact person. Uh, so the SAO contact person will receive the onboarding email and by default, he'll be the tenant admin. So uh, if you are looking to transfer the SAO from the original creator to the other person, yes, it is possible uh, to do so. Uh, the tenant admin writes uh, also needs to be transferred to the new person. So uh, for more info, I have attached the FAQ in the chat section. So uh, this is how the SEO and the tenant admin works. Like, uh, feel free to add anything uh, when I to this. Yep. So uh, and the permission which SOA has is that in case of uh, you have set up an IDP and uh, the changes have been you know incorrect and you are unable to log in. So the by default, uh, SOA will be able to recover the tenant using the recovery link and then you know edit the IDP again and then get back up again. So that is another uh, permission which SOA has. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, we have another question here says, is there a potential to create a way to create templates for the home tab in Click Cloud? So their goal is for the executive team to have a starting layout, finance, um, et cetera. Otherwise, they'll have to train all the users on how to configure. Okay, so there's that layout that you can create. Yeah, it's, it's, about, it's Thomas. I mean, I can. So, so I think you know, the first thing I would like to confirm, but I'm, I'm you know, pretty sure that's what, uh, you know, when we talk about the home tab, you know, we talk about the home tab in the hub. And I think that's what uh, people are, are referring to here. So, they, so today you cannot change, you know, the, let's say the default behavior, you know, for, um, you know, I want every single homepage to look the same. We are currently working on, um, something that you know we call internally, you know, now public collections. You know, today collections are private. You know, meaning that is something people can configure for themselves. So that's an individual setting. We are looking into this as something that we want to offer as a public collection, which then would allow administrators or tenant owners, you know, to configure. Hey, I want everyone to open the the hub, and then you know, I want them to see those four categories at the top. You know, everyone like that. You know, whatever they do underneath is up to them. So that is something that we are actively planning, but it's not possible today to make the hub, you know, the homepage the same um, for everyone. I mean, if you open it without configuring it, you know, just putting it this way without changing it, then it's the same for everyone. You know, I mean, that's where you see the, you know, most recently used, you know, all these types of things, you know, that is um, that is obviously the same. As soon as they start changing it, then it's, you know, it, it's changed, but it's actually, Right now, it's working as designed as, you know, we want people to, you know, to have the ability. Uh, but again, you know, with these public collections to come, you know, we we are planning to offer a way that you can make this, you know, more or less, you know, enforced in a way uh, that they that they look at the same. So. Um, so are we able to create Excel reports and broadcast it like in, in printing? Um, I was it was interesting because even with the last question, we're talking about their hub, which is their home page. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, but if they're thinking even a step further, dashboards have you know 
set views that you can create. Um, and even you could do special reports for your executive team. <laughs> it's interesting that the next question then is about reporting. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to talk about reporting service here or if there's any other things you want to highlight when it comes to click cloud reporting. Should I? Okay, I, I can I can jump quickly. I mean, so so this is one thing I honestly, I mean, so this is what I referred to in the beginning. There's a lot of stuff happening right now in this world of, you know, making some of the previously known and printing features available as well in SAS. This is one of those kind of things where uh, I would have to confirm, you know, what's possible exactly today with the, uh, the, the team owning this part. Um, what I can say anyhow is, you know, for instance, um, things like alerting, you know, in the product, you know, you can set up, for instance, an alert and then distribute, you know, results and, you know, call it a report, you know, to people, you know, I mean, you can set up an alert on a specific chart and then alerting a lot of other people, you know, which is basically distributing this, you know, to them whenever a certain event happened, you know, as an example. So that is something which is embedded in the SAS version where you can set up an alert, you know, doing this um, just as, a, as another way of giving information away. But it's, uh, so if that particular one, um, where we are with that, I honestly have to check. So that's, uh, or we have to check. Uh, that's a good call out. Um, the learning features, I hope, are great. Is there anything you wanted to add to this question or? Yeah, I mean, uh, we do have an option in, uh click automation wherein you can you know distribute the excel report uh i can say that support article which we have that's actually a good call the automations piece you know gives you a lot of possibilities that you might not think about in the first piece here so that's a So I pasted that on the chat. So if you see that link, it has the you know step-by-step -step instruction on how you can you know distribute the you know formatted Excel from your app to you know particular set of users who are part of your you know same group or you know individual users. Great. Right. Um, so I think that's all the from that, we we turned through a lot of the, the audience questions. So keep them coming, everyone. It's the Q and A below. Um, we want to make sure if you came here to ask a question that we get to you in time. Um, if there's not a lot of questions, we end early, and we don't want that to happen. If you have one that you're dying to ask, <laughs> but um, I have one here just because there was a lot of questions around in click community around reloads. Um, which I think in a way kind of ties to application automation because you can automate your reloads. So do you guys want to speak about reloading data here? Um, this question was specifically on creating an object, uh, a button object to run your reload. But is there any insight you guys want to talk about when it comes to data reloads in Click Cloud? Which I guess would be more for your like on maybe more of a hybrid deployment because when you have cloud connections, reload isn't always. Yeah, I mean, well, I think one way of looking at it is, you know, so so when so you just mentioned, you know, we just talked about one example where automations can do that. You know, an automation, for instance, can be started with an event, so with a webhook. You know, so they can listen. So an automation can listen to such an event. So that would be one way that you actually, you know, have a button that fires, you know, up an event and that triggers the automation. So that would be one, you know, way of doing that. It depends a bit on on what you really want to, you know, reload. If that's the same app that you're kind of in right now, I mean, it, so the automation, you know, can handle that, you know, and that's probably the simplest way here. Or you could, you know, as well do this with the reload, you know, task APIs here, you know, that you kind of prefer to them, so that would be a way. But I think uh, if we talk about the button, you know, then we talk about the automation. Um, I, I would just add, you know, I mean, having, you know, everyone reloading apps, you know, 
besides from you know maybe a schedule or something you know that might be something you want to think about if that's the best uh, approach here right or is it maybe even better to say that it's more like a general like event that refreshes the app but then you know it updates for everyone rather than having every user pre pressing the button hey i want to reload now but you know do they know if data has been updated yes or no i mean there's a you know a few questions that you might want to think about before you just add a button into the app to allow people to reload so that's uh, No, nope, I think he covered. Um, and we have a question here on, is there methods that we can automate an export of a QBS from ClickCloud and load into a client sense, I mean, a ClickSense client managed version? Okay, so can they automate from cloud and load into client managed? We are in a hybrid environment and need this capability. What are you guys thoughts on that? Um, I will so add, as you're thinking, yeah. <laughs> that we no, do yeah. have a um, moving from click view to click sense SAS. So um, we don't. I don't think we have a sense to SAS one. I'll look, but out on Q and A, we have a lot of like migration migrating to click cloud um, webinars that might be something to check out both um, Q and A with click, which is what you're in now. And then Techspert talks, which is run by my colleague, Detroit Rainey. So um, we have a lot of key engineers that are, are their expertise is in that migration piece. So it's another thing to check out. But as far as the hybrid environment comes, what were you going to say? Yeah, so so I mean, so this so this question, I'm I'm just thinking. So, I mean, so yes, you can export an app, you know, you can import the app. So I'm just thinking. So, if the question is, for instance, are you able to export an app that is already published and in a managed space? So currently, we do not uh, support the uh, the possibility to export an app out of a managed space. So this is coming as well. You know, we know that we want to do that, and we have other customers asking for that. Uh, so that the the capability to export an app that is you know in a published state, which is in a managed space. Um, I would still probably ask the question here. You know, when you say you're like in a hybrid mode, which is you know mostly used in a way that you push an app from client managed to SaaS why you would do this the other way around you know i mean this is kind of um so if you if you consider for instance um, things like you know people are adding a sheet you know uh in an app that has been distributed slash published and you want that sheet to become part of the app that you distribute you know so to make it more of a basic or like base sheet that is something you could copy paste there, so the whole sheet as an example i mean th this is so export import is possible, except for the fact that you cannot export an app out of a managed space today. Uh, besides from that, you can. And I mean, talking about like automation. Um, it looks like they, they added yeah. another question. It says related to migration question. It relates to end printing needs that are not in SAS. So that's why they're- uh, Okay, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, so meaning they want to use and printing. Of yeah, like you know. Okay, uh, I mean, so this this would be something. So I I think I I know. I mean, this is this would definitely require like a few back and forth questions here. So this is why I, w I don't want to stop that. But I mean, if uh, if this person uh, can share with us some ways to get in touch, you know, then I think we can have a, you know, a chat about that one. That might be the best, you know, just to see that we are doing the right thing here. And, and so long story short, yes, you can, you know, export apps and you can even, you know, automate stuff like that. But I think we just need to talk about what's the best possible path here. So. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're listed as whoever asked this question as an anonymous attendee. So we cannot hunt you down, which probably just means you didn't use the click ID to log in. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we will we will send you that note. Thank you for sending us that um, email, and, and we'll follow up on that. But thank you. Um, we don't want you to do this manual stuff. The whole point of Click is to not make this manual. So we'll, we'll get you up and running in no time. 
Okay, Stefano is asking in the Click Cloud tenant, if for example, he's in the European tenant, are data GDPR, general data protection regulation compliant? Thanks. Good question. So you might speak to our data compliancy. Uh, so it's actually so there is this page as so I'm, I'm you know there is this page click.com slash trust you know which gives you all the uh, the certifications and um, and I'm actually looking at this right now uh, because because we do have the uh, you know different types of uh, things like fat ram you know, TISEC, SOC 3, SOC 2 compliance here, you know, which obviously includes uh, the, 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 because the GD, I mean, GDPR is a, you know, that's the, the European thing, you know, but um, mm -hmm. uh, so this might be something, uh, Katie, where we want to uh, ask one of the guys from the, um, you know, compliance team here, just to answer that in a, in a proper way. I mean, I know that we have basically, you know, I mean, we have a couple of customers even in the public sector, you know, world in the, you know, US and, you know, there's all these kind of things are in place. It's more, you know, that what's the equivalent here to what we, you know, call the GDPR, that will be something we want to add here maybe in a, uh, to that question, because I think it's a good question. And then, you know, we can, you know, we can assign this to the, uh, recording when we place it and then having that one answered uh, in a pretty official way, so. Awesome. Yeah, and, and Stefano, we have your your name, so we have your registration email. So if, if the email you use to register, um, we'll, we'll follow up on that. But... And I'm posting the, uh, I'm just posting the link here, you know, which is the uh, the trust page, which, which has all the stuff that I just talked about on it, so. Great. I will say we're very familiar with a lot of compliance needs. We have a lot of healthcare um, companies that we work with and, and we ourselves are a global company. So for where our tenants are, um, I know we have different regulations in each um, place we exist. So we'll get you more of those exact details as if we get the right person on that call. Okay. Um, I think that's everything that we have from the audience. So I can pull out a few more, um, a few more community questions that are out on the community forums, but I'll, I'll let you guys, as I ask that question, feel free to get in any remaining Q&A with our experts as we have you on the line for Click Cloud, um, the big world of Click Cloud. So feel free to ask away. And like we said before, if we don't know, we'll point you to the right person who does. Um, so. This is a similar question, not a similar question, but it has to do with security. It's saying how to exclude values from data, for example, patient names. This is specifically in regard to the data load editor and excluding values from the transform, um, not original table. So we could talk about data load editor, we can talk about data transform, we can maybe even talk about section access. I'm not sure what if you want to take these in other directions, but what would your guys' recommendation be to help secure some of those patient names? Don't all jump at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, I, well, I mean, you just mentioned that. I mean, section access would be, uh, you know, in that particular case, it would be, you know, I'm, I'm, looking at this, how to exclude values from data, um, you know, in regards to the data load editor. So, well, I mean, so section access is basically security on the data layer, right? You know, where you could say, I want people when they come into the app, I don't want them to see a specific region, a specific country, a specific product name or whatever, you know, you can uh, exclude that. If, if you, so if I'm, owning an app and if I'm giving Katie only access to the, you know, the US-based data and I have access to Germany, then I won't even see that American data exists in this app, but I can see still all the same sheets, all the same stuff. So that's the idea with section access, right? Um, if that's what you're after and there's even, you know, this kind of omit 
field, which is a pretty specific one, you know, which, uh, you know, completely removes it, you know, but I mean, section access um, basically encrypts the app and when you open it, then it hides all the data, which is not assigned to you security wise. So that is, uh, Right. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different ways to manage who sees what. There's at the app level, at the space level, where we have managed spaces, um, and you can really lock who who is part of that space and who is not when you're looking at your users. And then there's that data access, um, which is section access. Um, I'm wondering if. Is role-based access something different than the two above, or what am I thinking of? No, well, not not. I mean, it's. I mean, you, you mentioned that, right? I mean, it's it's different uh, different levels of where security kicks in. You would say that uh, the first thing that you do is to make sure that who has access to the app, and that can be done today either via um, you know via a space or now we recently delivered that was in June this year we did. Uh, added the fine grain app level security to our platform so that you can add security on the app level in spaces, not just on the space itself. So with that, you're giving people access to the app. And then when people have access to see and open the app, then the section access is the second layer here that makes sure that, you know, yeah, you can open the app, but what's the data that you can see is then protected and controlled by section access, right? So that is where, you know, you can have a role that gives you can contribute so you can add a sheet to an app in a managed space, uh, but that still could only mean that you can only add a sheet based on the data in a specific region. You know, what someone else can do the exact same thing, but on data from a different region, you know, that's... Uh... Right, right. Okay, great. And that's, that's all for viewing data. Do you want special, you know, limitations on what people can do with data? We have different license types like professional versus analyzer license. Um, the professional license can create more and do more and analyzer, I would say, is, is more of a view kind of function. Um, so there's lots of things you can play within if you want to talk to your account manager or to um, us at, at Click Support, you can always hit the chat button in the Click community um, and, and learn more and talk about that configuration and talk about what works best for your organization. Okay, we have a question from the audience again. What is the best way to replicate hidden script pre present in Click View? So are you wanting to replicate that hidden script in like a in Click Sensex or that's currently in Click View? Is that the question? Are you guys interpreting that? Yeah. I mean it's uh I don't want to steal all the, the, the show from someone else here, but it's easy to be, uh, so this is basically, um, so the, the hidden script doesn't exist in ClickSense, you know, same as in, so Client Manage or ClickSense uh, SAS. Uh, so there is currently no plan to introduce the same thing, you know, I mean, if you really want a script to be hidden from someone else, I mean, one way, of course, could be that you have an include, you know, you kind of store the script in an external file and you load it in or like, you know, uh, a text or, you know, and that means you can edit the file externally and then you include this part of the script. Uh, so that would be the way how I would do it here. And that's actually how we, you know, how our customers have been doing this that I know, you know, who were kind of asking similar questions. Yes, it's, uh... Okay. And since they're talking about hidden scripts, um, could you, Tom, speak to how our developers can work better together in apps and shared spaces. So I'd say the opposite of hiding scripts. Is there a way that they can collaborate better while developing? Yeah. yeah so this is so well. That's uh, I mean that's that's definitely one of the um, the frequently asked questions as well. So I mean when we introduced Spaces as part of the SaaS product, you know one of the the, the main intents was that we do want to enforce um, or actually enabling customers and people more, you know, to, to work together. That's part of the spaces story anyhow. Um, one of the, uh, the biggest pieces missing, I would say almost as of today is, you know, that you have to be the app owner to edit the script, for instance, right? That is something that we are actively working on as we speak to change that. Uh, so meaning you will see in the, in the foreseeable future, um, 
and uh, there's a good chance that you're going to see actually a first step of that, you know, before Christmas. Uh, so take it as a Christmas, like, you know, present here, you know, that you're going to get uh, the history pane for the script in the script editor that allows you to see different versions of the script. You know, you can go back and forth, check in, check out, and, you know, even restore a version. So that is coming uh, as part of the script. And then to the true collaboration, uh, as part of this, you know, we will then as well add the ability that you can lock the script. So if a second person comes into the app while someone else is editing the script right now, you will see that, for instance, Katie is currently editing the script. And, you know, I'm as Thomas, I cannot edit it at the same time, you know, so I have to wait until Katie has kind of closed um, the script and or did a commit, you know, so to speak, right? That is, uh, that capability is coming. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And, you know, I know that a lot of customers are because this really enables them to be more of a truly uh, collaboration story. Um, to be added here, what we are not planning to do, and that's that's important, you know, we are not planning to say, hey, multiple people can edit the script at the same time. That's not planned because, you know, we are not doing this kind of magic merging of, you know, every single change at the same second. Uh, so what we are doing is one person at a time, but it can be multiple over time, you know, so that is what we are doing here, just to be clear with that. Yeah, so. And Alan writes, I think this was in a comment to our last question, but saying there is something that can be done in order to assign licenses and rights to users before they need to accept an invite and create a click account, et cetera. So, um, yeah. So, well, it's all good questions. So this is something I need to say. So this is, uh, so if you want to do it today, then, you know, one of the ways, you know, how you could do this is that you, um, that you do it with groups and you have maybe, you know, some groups assigned to a person, like a dummy user, and you log in with this person, then you kind of, you know, see the groups in the tent, you can assign permissions and, you know, stuff to the groups that those other people are part of, right? That's one way. Um, you know, talking about, you know, click account is something, you know, which is really a bit specific here because that is, you know, we are not, um, so this is really on, on you know, invitation. But what we are adding here as a, as a capability to the product, which is um, becoming a true story for um, Azure ID first and then other IDPs to be followed is uh, the implementation of skim and for those you know i mean skim is s c i m that is something you can google that as well but that allows you to uh, you know to sync users and groups into a tenant before they have actually logged in once before right so that is something and that means you can then start assigning permissions and stuff like that so that is something which is in development too right now um, but that is again to be developed for the Azure ID use case first, and then there's other IDPs coming. Uh, click account again is something very specific, and therefore, you know, you have to log in before the account becomes active in the tenant. So that's. Uh, right. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to ask the last question because we're getting closer to the top of the hour, unless you guys want to sneak in some more audience Q and A. So. If you have something you're dying to ask, feel free to type it in. Um, this is the last of my questions that I have from Scouring Community. This one actually comes from our, our cases. So we have a lot of cases and tickets created on the support side without pivot table. Um, so people are asking about how can they, it's mainly around formatting. So how can they expand the cells, change the background color, um, mainly around formatting those pivot tables. So I'm wondering if maybe Vinay, can you give us any tips on visualizations or? Nope. <laughs> nope. That's <laughs> okay. I don't mean to call you out. Um, I will say we did a great session and it must have been, so September was Replicate. August, I believe we did a visualizations um, Q&A with Click with Patrick Nordstrom, who is the king of click visualizations. Um, so I highly recommend you check out that session and also just check out any posts that he does on click community. He does um, a lot on our innovation blog and he even on LinkedIn, if you follow Patrick Nordstrom on LinkedIn, he does like 25 days of visualizations for click. And there's a lot of cool ways to maneuver and manage different charts and visualizations. So 
I'm sure there's a pivot table out there. I will try to find a resource that I can share with everyone after this in our posting specifically on pivot tables, but um, that that's where we might want you to bring those those visualization questions if we do another topic on that. Actually, I think our text for Thursdays this month, I mean, our text for talks, which was run by Troy Rainey, I'm pretty sure he's doing visualizations this month. So we never go too long without having one of those sessions is what you can rest easy on. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to speak to today? Any questions that sparked another topic in your mind you want to talk to? If not, I think I'll just go into my end blurb where I do all my shameless plugs on what's next and, and how to find a fun community. What do you guys think? Makes sense. I think, Katie, the only one I, I really just quickly mentioning that, you know, um, just to give people one other heads up is that we are planning as part of this year still to add two more uh, security roles, which are, you know, pretty important ones. One is, uh, so we talked about Analyzer Professional, you know, and professionals can do a lot of stuff. And, you know, we are on our journey to disconnect those permissions from the license type and assigning this to um, uh, to security roles. One of this is uh, the ability to create private apps, you know, that is something private apps and other private content so that you want to, you know, people should still be able to create a sheet and a published app, but you don't want them to create their own apps and stuff like that. That is something that we are planning to deliver as well in Q4 as another role. And uh, the other one is about automations, as we have heard about, you know, this a lot as well. People like automations. We talked about it as well in this call. But in some companies, you, you don't want every single user who has a professional user to create their own automation. So that is a role that we are as well planning to add. Um, followed by the possibility to store an automation in a shared space to make it as well visible for other users, right? So just to add this as uh, two additional comments to this, because I think it's quite important that uh, people know about it and, and what's coming. So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Great, thank you. All right, so if you go to community.click.com, that's where I live, that's where Vinay lives. Um, Roshni, you might be out there too. Are you doing any of the live chat? Are you all across community? Yes. Yeah. So Roshni's out there. Thomas, I think I might have seen you, you know, every once in a while, but feel free to join us out on the community. Um, we, they just changed the navigation. So I just want to quickly share with everyone on how to find us. Um, so if you go to blogs and events, we have our expert-led sessions right here. So you're at Q&A with Click, and then Textbird Talks is what I was speaking about before. Um, if you're on the Q&A with Click, you can see the next session is on touring our Click Management Console, and all of our past events and recordings are out here. So that's it. I, I'm glad I fact-checked me. August was visualizations. Um, but we cover a lot of different topics here. Feel free to check out these recordings. Um, and then I know we were talking about forums before. If you have more questions, I'd say some cloud forums to call out are like moving to SAS. So for that one migration question, there might be helpful information in here. Um, you can even look into click and, and printing if you're looking into that. Our reporting service, which is the click cloud feature, um, new to click sense if you're new. That's just a great way to crowdsource a lot of these questions that you might have as you're getting started with Click Cloud. Um, like I said before, on any support page, if you hit support, let me hit it. Um, let's just go to our support updates lab. I like going to that because that's where I post. Um, out on our Click Support updates blog. Um, you should see, and maybe it's because my computer is not loading, a pop-up of our chat. So let me go back more to contact support. Um, we have a chat feature that pops up right here. And that's where you can talk to any of our agents, both product support or account related questions. Feel free to message it here. If you have any announcements, if there's anything you want to know about that's urgent, we put that there first. Um, and if that's not what you're contacting us about, then feel free to type away and, and we'll automate those quick answers and then we'll get you to an agent as soon as possible if you have any support questions. Um, I'll share the links out that have been shared today when I post this video one week from today. 
And you also should get a email with the recording um, for all who registered, whether you made it or not. So if you're watching this recording, not live, hello. Thanks for joining. We'll see you live at the next month, I'm sure. Um, I hope you all have a great week. Um, thank you for being a ClickCloud customer of ours. Uh, the possibilities are endless, and I hope we were showing some of those today. So um, thank you, panelists, for your time. We had a we had a great session. A lot of good questions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.